Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thanks for attending this virtual meeting of the Planning Committee, Thursday, the 11th of February, 2021. Um, my name is Councillor Caleb Tomlinson. I'm the chair of this committee, and Councillor Mel Donoghue is the vice chair. This is an audio and video meeting. It's been recorded, and the stream will also be live on YouTube. The web address for this is displayed on the agenda for the meeting and can be found on the Council's website. If you've joined the meeting because you're a member of the public who has registered to speak, please note you have a time limit of four minutes. Please unmute your microphone when I invite you to speak. The Shared Legal Services team leader, Taz, will operate a stopwatch and I will confirm when your time runs out. You should then finish or in if in the middle of making a point, wind up within a few seconds and finish speaking. After each report has been presented, presented and any speakers have made their representations, I will bring the application into committee. If any committee mem members wish to speak on an application, you should unmute your mic or use the chat function in the top right hand corner to notify our moderator that you wish to speak. I will then invite you in order. Taz will repeat the motion before the vote is taken to ensure everyone is aware of what is being voted on. I will call each member alphabetically to vote and Taz will confirm the outcome of the decision. And firstly this evening I'd just like to welcome Councillor Chris Lomax as a new member to the Planning Committee. I hope you have a very enjoyable time on the committee, if that's possible. Okay, please can I ask all members to confirm they can see, hear and speak before the meeting begins. Okay. All right, um, please can I ask all members to confirm they can see, hear and speak before the meeting begins. I will call your names alphabetically. Um, we have apologies, don't we, Taz? We do, Chair. Uh, Councillor Will Adams. Okay, thanks for that, Taz. Um, so, Councillor Donoghue. Yes, Chair, I can hear you. Councillor Flannery. Yes, Chair. Councillor Green. Yes, Chair. Councillor Hancock. Loud and clear, Chair. Councillor Hesketh. Councillor Lomax. Yes, Chair, and thank you for the welcome. Uh, Councillor Amelia. Yes, Chair. Councillor Moon. Yes, Chair. Councillor Smith. Yes, Chair. And Councillor Watson. Yes, Chair. Okay, thank you all for that. And our officers, uh, Stephen Brown. Yes, Chair, thank you. Taz Safter. Yes, Chair. Debbie Roberts. Yes, Chair. And Charlotte Lynch. Yes, Chair. Okay, thanks very much for that. All right, we've done apologies for absence. Do we have any declarations of interest? Okay, I take that as a no. Uh, item number four, minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of December, 2020. I have the amended minutes of the meeting of the 17th of December in front of me as discussed at our last meeting, uh, but an amendment has been made to the amendment to remove any reference to Councillor James Flannery having declared an interest on the venue Liverpool Road item. This should mitigate any back and forth during discussions, but you will need formally proposing to formally propose and second if members are so inclined to request this. So do I have a proposer? Me, Chair. And do I have a seconder? Yes, Chair, I'll second. Okay, thanks for that. We're, we're, if you want to have any discussions on the minutes of previous meetings, we're going to vote first and we can have the discussion when the live stream's finished. Um, it, it's just in the interest of the general public. Okay, so if we can go to the vote, uh, Councillor Donoghue. Yes, Chair. Councillor Flannery. Yes, Chair. Councillor Green. Yes, Chair. Councillor Hancock. 
Yes, Chair. Councillor Hesketh. Yes, sir. Councillor Lomax. Oh, sorry, Councillor Lomax, you can't vote on these. We weren't on committee at the time. Uh, Councillor Amelia. Yes, Chair. Councillor Moon. Four. Councillor Smith. Four, Chair. And Councillor Watson. Four, Chair. And I am also four. Those minutes have been approved, Chair, as amended. Okay, so I will sign those. Um, item number five on the agenda, the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of January 2021. I have the mi minutes of the meeting of the 14th of January in front of me. Um, do I have a seconder? I'll second those, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Donoghue. Okay, can we go to the vote? Can I propose an amendment to those, Chair? Councillor Smith? Yes, Chair. Did you want to come in? I, I did. I, I want to propose an amendment to those minutes, Chair, because they are not correct looking at them. Yeah, well, uh, as, I, as I said, we can do that at the end of the meeting when the YouTube stream finishes. I won't sign those and you can propose your amendments at the end of the meeting, okay? Okay, so you're not going to sign them, Chair? I'm not going to sign them, no. I'll wait till the end of the meeting. We'll take your amendments and then... So, the yeah. meeting of the 14th of January, I am not signing, but the meeting of the 17th of December, I am signing. Okay? Okay, Chair, thank you. Okay, um, item number six, appeal decisions. Stephen. Yes, Chair, we've got uh, one appeal to report this evening. That just came through this week. It relates to the paintball activity site, uh, which is land at Muchhool Moss off Midgehall Lane. The site is set in the countryside a few hundred metres to the southwest of Midgehall Lane itself within a copse of trees. In 2012, we gave a five-year temporary permission for the paintball use, which obviously has now ex expired, and the application was to regularise the use to allow it to continue. The site lies within a biological heritage site of particular significance or an area of raised peat bog and royal fern. The appeal inspector concluded a lack of evidence to confirm measures had taken place or will take place to protect the biological heritage status, status and features within it. He also concluded the application doesn't show connectivity to a public highway and although he saw evidence of a one-way system on part of a track, there is nothing to confirm these arrangements. He therefore couldn't assess the impact of the highway. Therefore, in conclusion, the appeal was dismissed and therefore there is no planning permission for the use and it now leaves itself open to enforcement action. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, Stephen. Good news. Um, item number seven, Lesser House Farm, Station Road, Little Hool. Um, I'd like to invite Debbie to present. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Lesser House Farm is a small commercial industrial site to the southwestern end of Station Road, Little Hool. Formerly agricultural buildings, there has been permission for horse box manufacturer in this and other commercial uses since 1998. The site is generally untidy. There are uh, storage containers and all sorts of um, detritus, for want of a better word, spread around the site. The area is semi-rural in nature and there is open land to the eastern and southern sides. Sporadically pre placed residential and farming properties are, are along Station Row, which is in the Greenbelt and Flood Zone 1, least likely to flood. The proposal, which is a revised scheme for a refused scheme for eight dwellings in 2009, is for six dwellings, two-storey with associated works following demolition of the uh, existing outbuildings and commercial units. Access remains mostly the same from Station Road, but there is a second access for Plot 1. It's a mix of semi and detached properties, um, appropriate gardens and policy compliant parking in a cul-de-sac arrangement. There is also drainage attenuation tanks to the centre of the site. 
overall the beer reduction in volume when taking into account the existing lawful structures. Um, the applicants also requested that we include Walmer Bridge into the table within repo the report. That's paragraph 9.4.5.7. So for clarity, properties will be around one mile from Walmer Bridge Retail Centre. Okay, there will be five complementary house types, a traditional design that reflects the neighbours in detached and semi-detached, with a material pallets been provided. Just a photograph from Station Road, there is a two-storey larger building on the left and a single storey on the right. This photograph was taken early 2020. Um, during my last visit, the barge at the front's been removed, but I couldn't get an, a good enough picture for, for the presentation. Photograph of the rear of the site facing south. The rear of the site facing east. As you can see, there's a number of storage containers and it's generally untidy. Um, there's an objection to inclusion of the containers in the green belt volume calculation. But where there is evidence that they've been on site for 10 years or more, those that use is lawful. And, and we feel it's acceptable to include them. They've been there about 19 years. Uh, we've got aerial photographs to prove that. Photograph of the rear, the eastern, southeastern side of the site. Okay, we've had five letters of representation as detailed in the report, but no objection from statutory consultees. It's a really finely balanced argument. So in summary, in support, we've got six delivery six dwellings towards the council's five-year housing supply and community infrastructure levy con contribution. Now that would support local infrastructure. We've got appropriate spatial separation and access. The site is previously developed land and there is no greater impact upon the Greenbelt openness. In officer's opinion, it's Greenbelt compliant. There is visual betterment and upgraded drainage, including the attenuation tanks and there will be similar traffic and noise to the existing commercial use. Against the site, there is loss of employment, but we have to remember it's not an allocated employment site. Reduced pavement access to the site. It's an unsustainable location in an officer's opinion, and object objectors say that it's out of character, but arguably, arguably commercial units are also incongruous in the rural area. The last application was refused for two reasons. The first was impact on the green belt, but officers' opinion is that harm to the green belt has been overcome as detailed in the report. And the first green belt reason from last time is therefore not recommended. The second reason for refusal is that the location isn't sustainable. That can't be altered and it can't be mitigated, mitigated against. Now, taking into account two appeal decisions that have been determined since the last decision um, and councillors' opinion from, from the last time, the site remains unsustainable. These other two sites scored uh, favourably against this particular one, but the inspectorate still considered them unsustainable. And on balance, we would recommend refusal for one reason only, that the application site is considered to be in an unsustainable location. It's quite a long reason for refusal and the, the exact wording is at the end of the report. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks for the presentation, Debbie. Um, we have three registered speakers in objection to this application. First, do we have an Andrew Ashworth? Yes. Uh, would you like to make your four-minute presentation, Mr. Ashworth? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. You off you go. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I am Andrew Ashworth. Eleven months ago, a planning application for this site was rejected nine votes to one by the planning committee. The reasons being that the development would have a greater impact on the openness of the Greenbelt and as such constitutes inappropriate development infringing on policy one of the NPPF. And two, the application site is considered to be in an unsuitable location due to transport issues and does not comply with Chapter 9 of the MPPF and the Central Lanks Core Strategy Policy 3. A planning application and its statements are still full of inaccuracies. The description of the site stated is incorrect. It should be a multi-let business site which provides employment. 
looking at the current site plan it is almost identical the one to the one refused and it still steps well outside the existing building's footprint yet the planning statement says there has been a reduction in the size of the new proposals which seems strange when there's actually been an increase in parking spaces on the site up from 24 to 27 vehicles a brief history and geography of the site will show why it's inappropriate for this application the site was originally a working farm with shippens, agricultural buildings and fields. In 1998, an application for the change of use of some of the agricultural buildings was granted and it was for the, ad for the use of the manufacture, conversion and sale of horse boxes, which had B2 usage. In 2008, the site became a multi-let business site and the horse box ceased trading around this time. Between August 2019 and March 2020, the following took place. The seven businesses on the site were given notice to terminate their tenancy. A planning application for eight dwellings on the site was issued. This was wholly opposed by the tenants and the parish council and their committee. The first planning application was refused nine to one by the planning committee. Some of the tenants received statutory minimum compensation. Three of the businesses relocated, three have not found suitable premises to trade from and one has ceased trading. Yet the new planning statement says the previous tenants having relocated without objection having been fully compensated, which is completely untrue. As Councillor Yates stressed with the previous application, this is not a brownfield site, is it a greenbelt occupied with agricultural buildings used for business? If you knock the buildings down, the land reverts back to Greenbelt and there are no very special circumstances that apply to it for alternate development. The NPPF has a very precise definition of this. Agricultural buildings don't count as previously developed land. A substantive aim of the core strategy is to deliver economic prosperity, having a sufficient range of locations and premises for local businesses to work from. This proposed application goes completely against this. Policies 9, 10 and 13 all aim to protect and encourage the appropriate growth of businesses and employment in rural areas. The housing land supply for South Ribble is currently well above the government's requirements and as such there is a much more urgent requirement for employment premises rather than housing. Also, this application would disrupt and cause inconvenience to the existing farming and businesses due to the unpredictable and unsociable hours they practice. For instance, tax tasks such as muck spreading and moving cattle would inevitably cause acrimony and problems with householders. I would therefore urge that this application be rejected outright tonight. OK, thanks for your presentation, Mr Ashworth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have a Robin Cowgill? Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. If you'd like to make your presentation, you have four minutes. OK, my name's Robin Cowgill. I run a farming business uh, next door to the proposed development. Uh, yes, I am uh, concerned about uh, disruption to my business. Uh, because I have had a few problems before with new people moving in, which is further up the road. So that's one. Uh, one of our main objections is the environment. The land around this site is designated an NVZ by the government and the European Union. That's a nitrate vulnerable zone. And it is planned that they would use a package treatment plant to put the treated sewage into the stream which runs through my land, which is in the nitrate vulnerable zone. Currently, there are just four properties with septic tanks that discharge into this stream. It is very slow flowing. So in periods of low water, uh, low rainfall and in summertime, it's just a very small stream. But the stream is in really good order. We have done some maintenance on it last winter desilting and cleaning and refencing the, the stream and the ditch off and we're surprised how many fish literally hundreds i had to have the lads on hand to put the fish the little fish just minnows and that but they were, it was really really in good order lots of wildlife in there in the past when the property there was a package treatment plant for two of the properties which they shared 
not longer, not long after it had been put in, it broke down and causing a pollution incident to the stream, which is right opposite my farm. Now, since then, the two, the two people, because they had a fallout over the, uh, over the cost of running the treatment plant, they then put the septic tank each. There hasn't been any problem since. The business units just have one toilet and a wash basin, just if needed. So it's been fine since then. But it's, I'm really worried, and I can't see that more than doubling the waste treatment waste and putting it in this stream, it will not cope with it and be a major disaster to the local environment. Also, moving on, it is a, a country, it is a, lo a very important local countryside recreation area for local people. The footpath at the bottom of the road is very, very popular and it's right next door to an SSI. It's only for, the site would only be 200 metres from the SSI, two to 300 metres. Yes, lots of local people from the village do walk down the road to, to, the, to the footpath and walk along the river. Now, generally, that will be in the weekend or in an evening. And it is generally quiet then. There may be some intermittent farm traffic, not all the time, depending on weather and such like. There is no footpath there for you to walk. You have to walk down the road. But if it's a countryside and the greenbelt, you would expect it not to have a footpath and to be a quiet country lane. It's enjoyed by a lot of people. And if you walk down, when you leave the village from the footpath and you enter, you drop down the breast, you're entering a pier, an area of, of uh, open countryside. Yes, there is a farm there and these buildings still do look like a farm. If you're going to put an housing estate there, it's way out of character and you're starting to put housing development in one of the most important greenbelt sites in South Ribble. And there aren't that many because it's next to the river. You know, it's not a massive area, but it's very popular. So, this, you know, um, for, so for those reasons and the reasons on the business, and it's just the environment won't take it. The nit nitrate vulnerable zone thing is really, really important. We're supposed to be reducing nitrates and phosphates oh, entering our water courses. Mr. Cowgill, you've had four minutes. You need to tie up now, please. OK, so I strongly uh, advise that the uh, the planning application be rejected. Thank you. OK, thanks for your time, Mr. Cowgill. Uh, Debbie, would you like to come in with some points there before we catch <coughs> in Andrew Parkinson? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I just, I think in fairness, I just need to clarify a, a point. Mr Ashworth is right that agricultural buildings don't constitute previously developed land. That being said, permission has been granted in the past for use of the buildings for commercial use. And regardless of whether they've changed since 2008, they've been in light and general industry use. Um, that's more than 10 years continuous use and, and in terms of planning, they are, the lawful use is light and general industry. It is an employment site and therefore it is a brownfield site. Um, yes, it's in the green belt, but it isn't predominantly a green field site. It is a brownfield site. Um, in response to Mr Cowgill's, yes, it's a nitrate vulnerable zone, but the Environment Agency and the United Utilities have assessed the scheme and similarly, the ecologist has assessed the scheme in terms of the estuary and adjacent water courses. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks for that, Debbie. Uh, do we have Andrew Parkinson? Yes, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Mr Parkinson. If you'd like to make your presentation, four minutes, please. Yeah, no problem. Good evening. My name is Andrew Parkinson. I left school at 16 to take up a joinery apprenticeship at AJ Ashworth Joinery. I worked there for over five years until Create Homes bought the site. I don't know how many people here tonight are aware of how difficult it is to get a good trade apprenticeship these days. Many of my friends have tried to secure an apprenticeship in the past and not been successful. That's why it is very important to encourage places for businesses to trade from locally. As already identified, the Central Lancashire Core Strategy aims to encourage and support this. The design and volume of this application is inappropriate for this rural setting. It would look as if it had been dropped down from a nearby housing estate. It goes completely against the Central Lancashire Core Strategy Policy 6, which aims to achieve densities for new housing that respects the local character of the surrounding areas. 
The Housing Minister, Robert Jenrick, recently announced that Beauty will be a major factor in new planning applications decided on by locals. This application would not satisfy this. It is neither outstanding, inspiring, groundbreaking or could be considered being in very special circumstances. This application is not appropriate on road safety grounds and its distance from amenities. Nothing has changed since the previous application. It is approached from down a rural lane, half of which reduces to a single track road on which it still only has one street light, no footpath, a deep ditch to one side and an outgrowing hedge on the other. It still has tractors and farm machinery going up and down every day, definitely not conducive with walking or kids playing. Councillor Smith highlighted this previously, yet the transport statement omits these facts. In fact, the transport statement has numerous incorrect facts and omissions. It constantly refers to the nearby A59 as being the A49. It also lists 10 local amenities for walking distance purposes as being from 1,220 to 1,950 metres from the application site. It then goes on to state that they are all within the 800 metres comfortable walking distance from the site as recommended in the Manual for Streets guidance. Clearly, they are all well above the comfortable walking distance. They have conveniently admitted that schools are 2,020 to 6,500 metres from the site. Let's be honest, this application is no way would encourage not using the car. It does not comply with Chapter 9 of the MPPF and goes against the Central Lancashire Core Strategy Policy 3, which aims to reduce the need to travel and manage car use. The statement makes an assumption that the volume of traffic at the site will be reduced. Can the applicant explain this? I would say that the vast majority of journeys by residents will be by car, 27 vehicles in total from residents, plus friends and family visits, plus all online deliveries, which are so common today. This will be seven days a week from dawn till dusk. However, when used as a business site, it will be for a maximum 15 vehicles per day, plus deliveries generally five days per week from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So there will be a substantial increase in traffic with this application, not a reduction. I therefore say that this application must be resoundingly rejected tonight. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your presentation, Mr. Parkinson. Um, right, I don't have any members not on committee wishing to speak on this application. Uh, do I have the agent, Chris Betteridge? Yes, here, Chair. Okay, Mr. Betteridge, if you'd like to make a presentation, four minutes, please. Thank you. Certainly. <clears throat> Good evening, members. I'm the agent on behalf of the applicant, Create Homes, a family owned Lancashire based business who, as you may be aware, are the owners of the site that is subject to this application. As you'll probably be aware, the buildings on the site are in a poor state of condition and repair, and they are now unoccupied and can only get worse. I'm advised all occupiers have, where appropriate, being compensated to allow them to relocate to alternative and better quality facilities elsewhere in the borough. It is therefore important we work with the local community to agree what happens next. Against this backdrop, the proposal before you for six high quality homes has been prepared following careful consideration of the committee's previous reason for refusal for eight dwellings on the site. The committee's first reason for refusal related to openness impact. As is identified in your officer's report, the proposal represents a reduction in volume when compared to the previously refused scheme and a 700 cubic metre reduction on the current buildings on site. The site is brownfield, not in open countryside, and the proposal will improve the openness of the site. The second reason for refusal related to the accessibility. We have thought carefully about this issue, appointing a transport specialist to advise on the submitted scheme. The proposed development results in a reduction in the number of vehicle movements when compared with the existing commercial use. On this basis, the proposed use is more sustainable. Furthermore, the nature and type of vehicles with a domestic use is different to those connected with the commercial operation, again which rep represents an improvement. In relation to highway safety, the Council is promoting this part of Station Road as a walking route from Longton. If this section of Station Road was not safe for pedestrians, Presumably, the council would not be recommending it to walkers. Both, up, both this application and the previous one have secured the support of Lancashire County Highways. 
The application proposal is within walking distance of shops at Bridge Court, 700 metres away, and further services in Walmer Bridge. The case officer has tried to compare the application site to those at Oakland Farm and Winston. However, these are very different. At Oakland Farm, there is a necessity to walk a considerable distance along Leyland Lane, a heavily trafficked main route out of Leyland. Winston is separated from Walmer Bridge by a national speed limit dual carriageway, the Longton Bypass. A walk along a council promoted walking route is very different to these two scenarios. Members should not consider these sites comparable and that the refusal of those sites should not influence this application. In addition to the above, there are a number of other benefits acknowledged in the officer's report. Reuse of a brownfield site, visual improvement, well-designed homes, elimination of a potentially conflicting use, delivery of housing, a detailed drainage scheme for the site which will improve drainage on Station Road to the benefit of all residents. Um, it, it should be noted that the site currently drains presumably into the, the ditch that was referred to previously, the stream, um, and, and this is no different with the scheme, but it will be the, the, the rate at which the water flows out will be reduced to green rate, greenfield runoff rate. In preparing this planning application, the applicant has sought to address the committee's reservations and engage with officers and community to understand concerns in developing the scheme. This included approaching the parish council who refused to meet. If the committee is not minded to approve this application, it would be helpful if they could provide a view to the extent and nature of development which may be considered acceptable. As the officer's report sets out, th there is a very fine balance in respect to the application and the applicant is keen to work with the council and committee to develop a scheme which officers can recommend. Whilst it is considered that the scheme before you is policy compliant, I'd be grateful for members' views if they would consider otherwise, and potentially deferring the application to allow for revised proposals to be considered at a later date. Um, thank you very much for your, for your time. Thank you. OK, thanks for that, um, Mr. Betteridge. Right, OK, I will open this up to committee if Debbie doesn't want to point anything. No, no more points to make. Um, Councillor John Hesketh, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think it's been very, very well covered by uh, the three objectors, Mr. Chairman. It is very, very little difference to uh, the previous application, which it's only two houses smaller. Uh, it still does not uh, comply with our local plan. And I have no object, no option, Mr. Chairman, but to uh, go with the officer recommendation and refuse it. Thank you. OK, thanks for that, Councillor Hesketh. Uh, Councillor Mal Donoghue. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, just listening to everything that's been said, um, I feel as well I've got to go along with refusal. So if you want me to be seconded in that, I will do. OK, thanks, Councillor Donoghue. So I've had a proposal for refusal and a seconder. Um, uh, Councillor Phil Smith, please. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I will be um, supporting the uh, refusal. Um, and <clears throat> I just think we should take into account that, I mean, really that it would appear from, uh, say, the uh, statements or evidence that's been given before us about uh, uh, running the, the businesses down. Um, and, and I think uh, Planning Committee have seen that before over over a period of time. Um, it's <clears throat> been running the business down and closing them down and giving them notice for very obvious reasons. Um, uh, the plan was obviously always to submit a planning application for housing. Um, and this really does impact on what is uh, a very important rural economy. Uh, and, it, and it is very, very important, uh, the rural economy. There's not a lot of it around. And the, the bits that we have got down these sort of lanes and areas are really, really important. So I will be uh, voting for uh, refusal, Chair. OK, thanks very much for that, Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor Flannery. Thanks, Chair. Um, what these um, applications give us an opportunity to really find out is um, what, what's actually going on. So listening to Andrew, Robin and Andrew, um, first of all, what you, you, we've heard is obviously the inconsistency in terms of what was presented to us at the latter part of the presentations 
whereas businesses haven't been compensated, and but that's not for us to judge. Robin, in terms of his business and his farm down there, made some excellent points, and he's going to be impacted more than most. And young Andrew, well, I think he needs congratulating to see a young guy so enthusiastic about an apprenticeship opportunity and how important that is to him. So well done for coming here and speaking, because that can't be easy. Uh, and just to respond to Chris, Chris, I just think we see this quite a lot. It's not our job to come up with a proposal for you or terms of advice. It's your job to bring something which is um, which we can work with. I said so. Unfortunately, in that instance, I'll be going along with my colleagues also supporting the refusal. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Flannery. Uh, any other members? On committee wishing to speak, or do we have any other proposals except refusal? In that case, I think we can go straight to the vote then. Okay, so Councillor Donoghue. Uh, for for yeah. Councillor Flannery. For refusal, for Chair. Chair. Councillor Green. For refusal. Councillor Hancock. For refusal, Chair. Councillor Hesketh. For refusal, Mr Chairman. Councillor Lomax. For refusal. Councillor Amelia. For refusal, Chair. Councillor Moon. For. Councillor Smith. For refusal, Chair, for the uh, officer's recommendations. Thank you. And, and Councillor Watson. For refusal, Chair. Okay, and I am also in favour of the officer's recommendation for refusal. Taz, can you give us the outcome of the vote, please? Yes, Chair. So that's a unanimous vote to refuse the application um, and on the grounds of um, what the officer has actually stipulated within her report. Okay, thanks very much indeed for that. All right, that concludes this evening's planning committee.